Hi, Leo Laporte here. Time for Ask the Tech Guy this week. We're going to show you how to get better lighting for your next Zoom call. Next. Ask the Tech Guy comes to you from Twit's LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees LastPass can ensure they are by making access and authentication seamless, whether employees are working in the office or remotely. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. This is Twit. This episode of Ask the Tech Guy is brought to you by LastPass. Visit lastpass.com slash twit. Hello, everybody. Leo Laporte here. Another Monday, another Ask the Tech Guy. And this question uh, comes from Lynn. Uh, she says, I'm a longtime listener to iOS Today and Mac Break Weekly. I, along with thousands of others, find myself sitting in my home office on video conference calls. My audio is pretty good. I use my iPhone usually. My displays are pretty good so I can see presentations and other people. But my webcam work needs some serious help. I'm not just talking about how can I zoom in on my face using my built-in laptop camera while I'm using Zoom. I am trying to figure that out. But also lighting the room. Do you have a show that talks about the peripherals needed to send decent video to others? Oh, yes, we do, Lynn. And I'm going to try to cut through all of the information because there's a lot and explain how lighting works. Here in our studio, we bring in professional lighting experts they're called gaffers in the trade uh, to come in and, and set up the lights there's a couple of reasons for that it's hard for you to light yourself because <laughs> you're sitting here and then you got to figure out where the light is and you got to look at it and you got to figure out what the light is and much easier to have your you know sit where you're going to sit in the camera you're going to be and have somebody come in and aim and tune the lights uh, that's why we do it that way in the studio. We have been using professional lighting experts since the day we started streaming video on Twit. Uh, typically, uh, the professionals talk about three-point lighting. And I'm going to show you some websites and give you some information here. This is not necessarily what I'm recommending. I'm just I'm showing you this because you're going to run into it. You're going to see it. This is from uh, one of our sponsors, Masterclass. Uh, and this is a free page. They do have, in fact, some master classes on this. But this is a free page on the website. What is three-point lighting? This is what the professionals use. And here's a good illustration. There's three lights. There's a key light, there's a fill light, and then there's a hair light, a back light. And each has a purpose. I'm not going to go too much into the depths of this because... This is not what I'm recommending you do. But since you're going to run into this, <laughs> I, I might as well let you see, uh, you know, what it is. You're going you're gonna to see this a lot. By the way, I call it a hair light. Uh, in this article, they call it a backlight. Sometimes it's called a rim light. That is a, an interesting choice, and I'll, I'll explain what all three do. I'll also refer you to Aunt Pruitt's excellent uh, show, Hands-On Photography. Uh, episode 8, it's about the light. He goes into all of this. He even shows you some specialized lighting tools like ring lights and so forth. Uh, I'll show you, we do have, in fact, a three-point lighting setup here, and I'll show you what each does. In fact, if I turn off the light, you'll see what each does. Right above me is, and, and also pointing at me, are big key lights. These are the lights that light up your front. And if I turn it off, you'll see immediately... It's not that I'm dark exactly, although I am. It's also kind of featureless and gray. A lot of people's Zoom pictures and webcam pictures look like this, where their face is just a blob, right? That's the key light, probably the most important light. But one thing we're trying to do with lighting is we don't want to flatten everything out. If you only used a key light, it would flatten everything out. It's kind of like using the flash on your camera. When you just use the on-camera flash, everything just kind of flattened out. So we also use a fill light, and I've got a couple on me here to, to kind of shadow, maybe, maybe one side of the face is brighter, to give some depth to your features. Then there's the backlight. I've got one back there uh, that is 
or hair light. Actually, hair light may be the best description of it because what it's doing is it's giving you some depth by lighting kind of the back edge of you. It makes you stand out from the background. The other thing that's fairly important and that we use in all of our sets, it's important to have depth. Uh, a lot of times you'll see podcasts where people are standing in front of a brick wall or a wall of some kind, and they're very close to it, a few feet away. That kind of flattens the whole thing out and gives it it makes it less interesting you see in our studio there's quite a bit of depth and the lighting shows it off there's a dark corner over here there's a several feet behind me there's a deeper background there there's a lot of stuff going on just like in real life it makes it more interesting honestly ant does a great job of describing this i'm not suggesting that you get three lights and you set up a multi-light situation most of the time on zoom the real issue is just not enough light and there are ways to fix this uh, streamers who do a lot of streaming uh, typically go to a company called elgato and use their key lights or their key light air and you can see this streamer using what is a key light in fact he's got two of them left and right. You might tune this so that one of them is a little less bright than the other to give your face some shadow. And that is probably all you need. This is a fairly expensive solution, the Elgato Key Light. And note, it's out of stock and has been ever since quarantine began. I found something very similar that's about half the cost on Amazon. This is what I use at home from a company, probably a Chinese company called Dazne, D-A-Z-Z-N-E. And for $200, you can get two lights, uh, about $100 each. These are LED lights. And one of the features that makes them suitable for professional uh, photography and video is they're tunable, the color temperature. They can go from blue daylight to yellow evening light. And you can. one thing that's fairly important is that your lighting kind of matches one to the other. But I'll be honest, even this is too much. This is what I would recommend. And I don't know if Ant went this far, but this is your local hardware store. And look, you just take a light bulb <laughs> and you put it in a $12 reflector with a clamp and you put it, clamp it, probably not too close to you. The other thing you might want to do is drape some cloth off of the, over this. Make sure it's not going to burn and catch on fire, but soften it with some cloth Softness is important. You don't want the point of light to be too bright. Honestly, at home, for years, I didn't even use additional lighting. Uh, my desk is in a bay window. I have three windows. It really just like a key light, one right in front of me, two to the sides that are kind of like fills, and I could adjust them using the louvers <laughs> on the, uh, on the uh, blinds to get one a little bit brighter than the other, and that was more than adequate. The thing to understand with lighting is there's two things. One, digital cameras, like the one built into your laptop or your desktop or the ones you buy from Logitech and other companies, digital cameras need a lot of light. They don't do well in low light. So if you are not brightly lit enough, it will get grainy, it will get muddy, it just won't pop. If you want it, so just have enough light is number one. And honestly, if you have a window nearby, daylight is beautiful, open a curtain, have it on one side of your face, that's a gorgeous shot. In fact, some of the best portrait photographers use natural light, that's what they call it, uh, and a single point source, like a window, and get amazing shots where half the face is kind of dark, half the face is lit. It just looks gorgeous. That would probably work. People might think you're a little weird because your half of your face is in darkness. Not maybe ideal for a Zoom uh, call. What you're trying to do is get enough light on you and enough different sources of light so that you look three-dimensional. Make sure you light the background, too. And again, it could be a table lamp. It could be a little reflector light from the hardware store. It doesn't have to be fancy. But make sure your background is lit as well because that gives it more depth. It gives it more 3D. I think, honestly, going to the hardware store, picking up one of these lamps from the hardware store, maybe two or three, put a light bulb in them, cover them to soften them a little bit, but you don't want that bright, harsh light on you, uh, and you're going to have a great, 
uh, look. You're going to look 10 times better than anybody else on there. You don't need the fancy setups. I showed you those three-point lighting setups because I know if you ask this question, you're going to hear that. But really, you don't have to get that fancy. You may be even able to use your own table lights uh, and, and just position them in such a way that you're getting some light in your face. Warmer light, more yellow light is more flattering. Blue light might be better for a daytime conference where you want everybody to pay attention. Um, you might choose those colors depending on what you need. The hue light bulbs, for instance, you can change colors. It's always nice, and you'll see this a lot in news shows, to have some color in the background. They often will use what we call gels, which are thin plastic sheets of color on top of the lights to put a, a, a color, a cast on the background to separate it from your normally lit foreground. A blue gel in the back really kind of can add some professionalism and depth to your image. There's lots of tricks you can use. You don't have to get very fancy. A trip to your local hardware store is probably all you need. Great question, Lynn. Uh, I think by doing this, you're going to look better than anybody else on your next Zoom call. Thanks. Our show today brought to you by LastPass. With your IT department having such a big job right now, there's new threats, there's new regulations, makes strong security very complex. LastPass allows employees to do their work securely, whether they're in the office or in the home. LastPass never stores your master password, so hackers can't get to it. And encryption only happens at the device level before syncing the LastPass. LastPass uses exactly the same security as the banks and the military. You're getting the best possible encryption. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to find out how they can help you. That's lastpass.com slash twit. Thanks so much for a great question, Lynn. Email me if you've got a question. We're getting a lot of them. I probably won't get to every one of you, but I'd love to hear from you. Ask the tech guy at twit.tv. I'm Leo Laporte. I'll see you right here next Monday for another Ask the Tech Guy. Stay safe. Bye-bye. Hey, what's going on, everybody? I am Ant Pruitt, host at Twit TV. Got a question for you. Have you gotten tired of how bad your photos are looking every time you post them to Instagram? Better yet, have you gotten yourself a new camera and you can't quite figure out why the images just don't look that good? Well, I have a solution for you. This is my show, Hands On Photography. Each and every Thursday, I sit down and share different tips and tricks that are going to help make you a better photographer and a better post processor. So subscribe today at twit.tv slash hop to learn more. Stumped on a nasty tech conundrum? Email ask the tech guy at twit.tv.